नमस्कार सो चंद्रयान थ्री मिशन हैज बीन सक्सेसफुल इट्स गोइंग ऑन सक्सेसफुली नाउ येस्टडे वी स्पोक अबाउट हु शुड गेट द क्रेडिट फॉर ऑल ऑफ दिस ठीक है ना सो इफ यू हैव नॉट सीन दैट एपिसोड प्लीज सी इट नाउ नाउ देर इज अनादर पॉइंट दैट गॉट हाईलाइटेड आफ्टर द चंद्रयान सक्सेस यू सी अकॉर्डिंग टू अ रिपोर्ट रिकॉर्ड इज स्लाइटली डेटेड इट इज 2014, थाउजेंड फोर्टीन बट थिंग्स हैव नॉट रियली चेंज मच अकॉर्डिंग टू अ रिपोर्ट ओनली टू परसेंट ऑफ इसरो इंजीनियर्स आर आईदर फ्रॉम आई आई टी और एन आई टी सो इंडिया प्रीमियम इंस्टीट्यूट का जो ग्रेजुएट्स है पीपल हु आर फ्रॉम प्रीमियम इंस्टीट्यूट लाइक आई आई टी एंड एन आई टी दे डोंट ज्वाइन दे डोंट ज्वाइन इसरो दे प्रीफर टू गो टू नासा now it is this concerns us this concerns us and i tell you why let's get right into sh- into the show and talk about it so like i said uh, according to a report in 2014 and like i also said things have not changed much and i'll tell you why uh, only 2% of uh, isro scientists are from iit and nit now this should concern an average indian and i will tell you why it should concern an average indian it should concern an average indian because in 2016 the modi government had stated that on an average it is spending around 6 lakh rupees per year on each student in iit roughly 25 lakhs is what the government spends on an iit graduate when i say the government spends what i mean is you spend because at the end of the day the money comes from taxes so 25 lakhs we are spending on an iitn and mind you this iitn uses that 25 lakhs of the tax payers money and goes out and works with a nasa whereas in india you have engineers from local institutes doing the work they're doing a fabulous work by the way they're doing a fabulous work so not that one uh, is is kind of uh, regretting but they're doing a fabulous work but the question still remains that bhaiya when we are spending this kind of money as tax payers how come they are going out and working and uh, india directly doesn't benefit out of them i'll give you some more data before i get further the a total of 463 crores was spent on 19 iams in 2016 this is 2016 report the hrd ministry also spent rupees 2577.65 crores on 31 nits and the indian institute of engineering science and technology shippur as per the data provided in the rajya sabha rupees 120 crores were spent on the indian institute of science Bangalore, while 550 crores were spent in six Indian Institute of Science, Education, and Research. Besides this amount, which I just mentioned, rupees 609 crores was spent by the centre in 159 state universities, rupees 107.33 crores on IGNU, and 86 crores. on the three schools of planning and architecture this is broadly what the kind of money we are spending on our kids education is it good fantastic i would say spend more spend more but somewhere down the line this brain drain is worrying this brain drain is worrying now why i say that uh, 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 you know we are still the the state has not changed much uh, things are more or less same as what it was in 2014 why do i say that i don't say that on the basis of some figures but i say that on the basis of uh, mr s somanathan the chief of isro has as has been speaking about this in various occasions various institutions that he has gone he has been speaking about it for instance mr s somanathan was speaking in uh, iit bhu he went out to say that our nation needs you more than ever in these challenging times i'm confident that your talent ideas energy and enthusiasm you would build successful and fulfilling careers and meet the expectations of our country he says listen you know what we require you and he is right 
He is right. IIT, IIM, uh, 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 Indian Institute of Science, few of the best institutions in the world. You see, these are few of the best minds in this country. Possibly one of few of the best minds in the world. While they are a phenomenal demand, phenomenal demand uh, across the globe. Every, every corporate would want, want to hire them, which is so proud. As, as an Indian, I am very proud of that. But the fact is, today, India requires them. We are growing in the field of technology. So India requires them. Our engineers from local institutions are brilliant too. It is not that they are any less. But the point is, it would value add if there are these IITNs and these uh, uh, NITNs uh, working uh, uh, for our own country, for our own development. Mind you, when I say that there is only 2% of people working uh, uh, in ISRO, 2% of IITNs, NITNs working in ISRO, I just don't mean ISRO. I mean also other sectors, sectors like roadways, sectors like railways. You see, these are sectors which does not attract IITNs and I, NITNs much. Now, for us, this is the most crucial time. This is the most crucial time for us to have the best of brains coming in, working for our infrastructure. Lot, lot is happening. Like I said, one thing this government has done well is infrastructure. So, a lot is happening in Indian infrastructure. And this would be the time that we really look out for our people to come and, uh, and work for our own country. Okay, now let me give you some more figures. Two of every three immigrants of India are highly educated. Two of every three immigrants. For instance, what I want to say is that, you see, in the share of immigrations who are highly educated, India ranks first. 64.7% of Indians are highly educated people who immigrate. 64.7%. This 64.7% people who are immigrating, who if, they, who if, if a large percentage of these people stay back in India, these were the people who could help our roadways, our highways. These were the people who could help our railways. These were the people who could help our aviation. These were the people who could help our power sector. These were the people who could help our ISRO. You see, these were the people who could ensure that clean wa drinking water, which is the last common denominator in our country. These people could make this happen. Again, like I say, I am not therefore taking away any credit of students, graduates from, from local institutes, from, from other institutes. They are equally better. Some of them are brilliant. Some of them are much better. I have seen them. I have experienced them. Some of them are far, far better. They may not get the opportunity at IIT, but they are far better. That's not the point I'm trying to make. But what I'm trying to say is we need highly educated people now in India. And this is a concern that we need to be bothered about and we need to address. This is the point. The second is Japan with 50.4%, uh, 59.4%. Third is United States with 52.7%. The problem is Japan and United States already are developed. Their infrastructure is developed. The, most of their sectors are developed sectors. So the, the, the point is India needs our brains to be with us now more than a United States or Japan. That's the point I'm trying to make. Now, let us be fair. Let us be fair. See, the point is, we cannot just overnight expect, go and say, Are, IITNs, we are paying from our tax money, so you have to stay back. No, wo bhi theek nahi hai. Wo bhi theek nahi hai because we need to also look at it from their perspective. And from their perspective, in India, Unemployment levels rise with education, according to the Center of Monitoring Indian Economy. CMI says that with education rising, unemployment also rises. So it is difficult for a highly educated person to get uh, jobs here in India. A, B, it is, there are that much openings for highly educated people. So that too is correct. That too is something that we need to consider. As of December 2021, one in every five college graduates were unemployed. Besides lack of jobs, there are also problems of skilled opportunity, mismatch, corruption to deal within the country. Now, it is not just about graduates here. While they mention graduates, it's about even an IITN, even, a, even an NITN. It is not necessary that Indian companies can afford them. It is not necessary that the government of India pays them enough. It is not even necessary that they should get a job in the government of India. 
It is not even necessary. So the problem is, you also need to see it from an IIT perspective. Are we making ourselves as robust? Our PSUs, our Indian companies, are we trying enough to attract IITians? Why? There is a lot of exercise that goes through to ensure that you get the first day in IIT campus interviews. Corporates go through a lot of exercise. The HR goes through a lot of exercise. A lot of films, a lot of motivational films, a lot of you know films that attract people, attract these students to come and join them. A lot of effort is taken to attract these kids to come and join that particular organization. Does a PSU do enough? Will NHAI do that? Will, is, is, is ISRO doing it? Are other companies doing it? Now, this question also needs to be asked you, you, from the other perspective, from the side of the, speaking from the perspective of an IITN. So, that too doesn't exist. Another thing is, opportunity abroad, it happens because op, abroad people come, offer good money, offer good money, offer great career op, opportunities, offer a great lifestyle and attract uh, kids. These kids go. So the fact is both ways. A, an IITN, an NITN should consider the fact that, listen, the taxpayer has spent money for his education, his or her education. So there is a, there is a, there is a moral responsibility, no legal responsibility, a moral responsibility to ensure that he or she gives back to the country. From a country's perspective, that is what, how it is. But from an IITN's perspective, you need to know that, listen, you need, I mean, he is one of the, he or she is one of the best brains in the world. You need to attract them. You need to give them offers. You need to give them attractive salaries. You need to give them a great lifestyle. You need to do that. They've earned it, right? Because that's what their, their demand is in the world. So we too need to take that extra step just by commenting and saying that, listen, you know, uh, by, you know, uh, uh, as usual, uh, which happens in our country by giving nationalist uh, uh, dialogues and nationalist statements and, and, and lectures and all alone will not work. Alone, it will not work. We need to also ensure that we, as PSUs, as government, we attract these talents. So that too is important uh, from uh, our perspective. Now, let me go to another aspect, the second part of my editorial. You see, when we talk about development, when we talk about attracting talents, when we talk about IITNs, IIMs, NITNs coming and working for our government organizations, our PSUs, our government, you need to have leaders who are educated. Now, one of those teachers who said that, you know, the leader, vote for a leader who is educated, I agree to that. What is wrong in that? Vote for a person who is educated. It is correct. And I will tell you what I mean by that. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Rajasthan Minister of Youth Affair and Sports, Ashok Chanda, you know what he said when uh, he was told that the Chandrayaan landed in the moon? He said, we were successful and made a safe landing. We salute the passengers, he says. We salute the passengers who have gone. <laughs> salute the passengers? See, if you forget about education, he doesn't even read a newspaper. He doesn't even read a newspaper. He is a minister, a lawmaker. A leader in the government. Now you tell me, how would you expect an IITN to work under him? You tell me. How would you expect an NITN to work under him? You tell me. If you were an IITN, would you want to work under him? So this also is an important problem. This also is an important problem which we need to address. Another story I will tell you. You know, uh, this is uh, O.P. Rajbar. He's a big leader. O.P. Rajbar, MLA of uh, SBS SP, says, I thank Indian scientists for their hard work and research. I congratulate them on their achievement of Chandrayaan 3. Once they safely return to earth, once they safely return to earth, tomorrow, the entire country should welcome them. O.P. Rajbar, leader of our, our, our government, leaders of our government, not leader of our government, leaders of our government. RJD spokesperson Shakti Singh Yadav, congratulations to NASA scientist for successfully landing Chandrayaan 3. Chandrayaan ka jo safal landing Chandrama pe hua, iske liye NASA ke sabhi baigyanikon ko hum badhai dete hai. So you see, 
one of the most the beginning of our uh, of our effort to stop brain drain is to ensure that our government leaders our leaders leaders of our country are educated our leaders should be educated because only an educated mind can control and manage an educated mind only an educated mind can inspire educated people to join them my point is very simple let's have educated leaders let's attract these young minds these young brilliant minds to come and join our psus and our government sectors and our isro let 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 let's attract them and finally to the students to the young students i mean this is the time india is growing lot of things are happening this is when india needs you infrastructure science technology are developing like nobody's business regardless of the government let me tell you regardless of the government india is is poised to grow and it will grow it will grow whoever can take credit but it will grow this is the time for young minds like yours if you are an iit and if you are an nit and this is the right time for you to work in india and to grow in india point i wanted to make till i see you next time that is tomorrow at 10 take care good night